You see, now they bear the iron hand. What makes July Perry a legend? Why do the people now take note? Because he lived and he died for our constitutional right to vote. Given, our Lord, given honor to our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, to the family of Mr. July Perry, the family of honor on this morning, to the Honorable Jeffrey G. Jones, most worshipful grandmaster, most worshipful union grand lodge of Florida and its jurisdictions, to the elected and appointed officers and members of the most worshipful union grand lodge, and to the same for its concordant and appendant bodies. To our elected officials who represent well their respective cities, counties, and districts in the state of Florida. To the media in attendance. To our veterans, to law enforcement, to our family, friends, and guests, I bid each of you good morning. Good morning. Consider this. What makes a man a legend? Is it because of his place of origin? or where he currently resides? Is it because of his family name? Or is it what he does for humanity that counts? In my opinion, a legend is a man who possesses the heart of a warrior and the unswerving devotion to do what is right for the people that he loves, for his family, for his country, even in the face of adversity. You see, Brother July Perry was such a man, legendary, because he did what was right, even though he knew such actions would cost him his life. The Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida, the July Perry family, and all who are in attendance on today, approximately 100 years after his death, we are here to celebrate the life of a legend in our Masonic brother. To this end, we have thoughtfully planned a program to honor Brother Perry, which consists of outstanding individuals who agreed to speak on this morning in honor of his legacy. We will begin the program by first introducing Mrs. Rhea Stewart, who will come forth at this time to sing for us Amazing Grace. Please join me in welcoming Miss Stewart. And I'm still not right, but I'm going to make it work. Mickey Mouse. Good morning. First, give an honor to our Heavenly Father. The only reason that we're all sitting here today, and it's because of grace and mercy, that he allowed us to wake up, move around, and get to this place, which is very special today. I was not born in that era, not yet. But it is an honor and a privilege to be a part of a legacy that makes a difference in 2020. And that means that he died for what is going on right now. You can say amen. It don't have to be in the church house to say amen. The Bible says we should praise him at what? All times. Not just when we're sitting up in a building. The church is within your heart. Amen. So I'm going to ask that you have some patience and pray for me while I attempt to sing to the glory of God. Not that you might not like it. Uh, you might not want to hear it, but I know heaven always has an open door for a praise. Amen. 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 There's too many people out here for those amens to be that sorry. 
Does anybody in here want to go to heaven? Because you're going to have to make some noise to go up there. Amen. You just ain't going to get up there with amen. 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 In thinking this morning about the life and legacy of July Perry, we are reminded of the words penned by Edgar A. Guest that simply said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. Yeah. I'd rather one would walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes a better pupil and more willing than the ear. Fine counsel is confusing, but the example is always clear. The best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds 
for to see good put in action is what everybody needs. On behalf of the Honorable Jeffrey G. Jones, 19th Most Worshipful Grand Master, and the entire membership of the Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge, Most Ancient and Honorable Fraternity, Free and Accepted Masons of Florida, Belize, Central America, and Jurisdiction, Prince Hall Affiliated. We welcome you this morning to this auspicious occasion honoring our brother, Julius July Perry, who an accurate reflection of the historical record would tell you was a member in good standing of the then Okoe Lodge, number 66. Today it's not only our privilege and pleasure to perform these last rites, but anyone with a Masonic IQ would tell you that we would actually deem it to be our Masonic obligation at the request of the family to accomplish this task by accompanying our dear brother to his final place of rest, just as his lodge would have done 100 years ago. Before I take my seat, I think it would only be a appropriate that we would acknowledge that the Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge did not accomplish today's activities alone. For organizationally, there was the July Perry Foundation and the family who stood by us, worked with us, and was willing to partner with us. And to the City of Orlando for their efforts, Mayor Dyer, and specifically to Ms. Russell and Mr. McGill from his office who worked tirelessly with us, and the added generosity of Commissioner Sheehan as it relates to this event today. To each of the local and state and federal elected officials present, to the Perry family, and to each of you gathered here today for this occasion. On behalf of this Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge, we say to you, welcome and God bless. Thank you, Senior Grand Ward. At this time, we're honored to have a presentation of portrait by Mr. Ali Vandell. Mr. Vandell. At least give us a give him a hand as he comes. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I stand here this morning. I'm reminded that we have young and upcoming artists, Mr. Ali Nasir Bandalee. Ali is 17 years old, junior at East River High School, who has displayed a passion for creating artwork at the beginning at the tender age of one and a half. He went on to man, win many awards and accolades. While in the first grade, he won second place in his age group in the statewide governor's black history month contest his award-winning artwork was uh portraying dr wells in the wells built museum located here in orlando florida it's actually displayed at the governor's mansion he won second place in the color the world peace city of orlando art contest his artwork has also been displayed at the winter park arts festival and featured on cfe Credit Union Art Calendars. By working on this extraordinary project, he was enlightened about a dark and horrific time in history and within our community. Ali understands the importance of remembering those who ultimately sacrificed their lives to vote. He also understands that he and others in this generation have a duty to exercise their right to vote and never take it for granted. So it's incumbent upon us as grown folks in the room to help and support our young uh, community. They, they're our future as they pick up the torch. He cemented this commitment by recently visiting the Orange County History Special Exhibit. Yesterday, this was home. To educate himself about the Koi Massacre, he was left feeling moved, honored, and inspired to work harder for his greatness in his work, as well as a, deep, a deeper appreciation for all the generational sacrifices that came before us. He hopes Mr. Perry's family will feel that this is a positive re representation of this great man whose life was, tra was tragically cut short and ultimately sacrificed for our right to vote. But Ali's enlightenment was not happenstance. A few months ago, 
Mr. J. Carr, commission Ali to create a masterpiece of artwork denoting the immortal image of July Perry. At the time of this commissioning, believe it or not, neither Ali nor his parents knew anything about July Perry or the Okoye massacre. With this presentation, Ali has made a very specific requirement for the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida for official acceptance of this artwork. And that is, this artwork is to be housed in a museum or culture center yet to be constructed within the city of Okoye. At the request of Mr. Bandali, the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida is at this moment gifted this fine work of art wherein Brother J. Carr will be the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge agent who will execute his final wishes. Ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and dignitaries, I present to you, Mr. July Perry. Thank you very much, Mr. Bandley, for that fine piece of artwork. Before we begin the remarks and we move into the last rites, we think it'd be fitting that we have a prayer. And to do that, we're going to ask our right worshipful member, T. Wright, Grand Treasurer for the Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida, to come forth and give us a prayer before we begin. Right worshipful right. my soul from endless death. The art of faith to thee I live, my weary longing eyes, oh may I now receive that gift, my soul without it dies. Most holy and everlasting Father, we come bow before thy throne of grace, humble hearts and bow heads. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for thou many blessings. We come praying thy richest blessing with all these in the sound of my voice. Pray that thou just bless us, O Heavenly Father, and we stand in thee. Then, Father, not only us, but bless every home that's represented here. Pray that thou just make them home to peace, love, and understanding, be in thy most holy and righteous will. Then, O Heavenly Father, we come praying for this our government, our United States, O Heavenly Father. Praying, O Heavenly Father, that will just bless us as we stand in need in this hour. Yeah. Then, Father, we pray for this Grand Lord, the Grand Master, O Heavenly Father. We pray that I will just crown his head with wisdom. Let him not not show high some knowledge to gain understanding, O Heavenly Father. He might lead these thy people in the way that you were having to go. Yeah. Have mercy. Then, Father, you see the manner that we are bowed in. Then, Father, we pray that everything we might undertake to do might be pleasing in our sight. Yeah. Yeah. Then, Father, we pray for the Perry family, O oh, Heavenly Father. Just have mercy this hour. Yeah. You know the needs, Father, better than know them I say. Just have mercy. Then, O oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for all those, O oh, Heavenly Father, that may be lying on their beds of affliction this hour. Yeah. Just be a doctor for them in their sick rooms. Just have mercy. Then, Father, those that's less fortunate than we ourselves, have mercy upon them because we realize, oh, Heavenly Father, thou art able to bless them with every need this hour. Just have mercy. 
And oh, Heavenly Father, we pray these and all other blessings. In thy Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Grand Treasurer Wright. At this time, we're going to have remarks from a number of individuals. And we're so thankful that they came here to celebrate with the Grand Lodge and the July Perry family and foundation to honor the legacy of Mr. July Perry. First up, we're going to ask Commissioner Patty Sheehan to give remarks on behalf of the city of Orlando. Commissioner Sheehan. Thank you. It's my honor to be here today, and I want to welcome everyone here to beautiful Greenwood Cemetery in District 4. And before I begin my remarks, if y'all notice that Mr. Perry's headstone doesn't look as old as some of the ones at the time that he died, it's because his grave was unmarked for so many years. And that's a, that's a wrong that's been righted, and it's the right thing to do here at Greenwood Cemetery. It's my honor to be here today. Good morning. Thank you, Grand Junior, Grand Warden Honeywell and Senior Grand Warden Moore. Welcome to the city of Orlando's beautiful Greenwood Cemetery, the final resting place of civil rights, martyr, and hero, Mr. Julius July Perry. We are honored that the Masons have traveled from afar and wide to gather here today to perform this last rite ceremony for Mr. Perry. I'm filling in this morning for Mayor Dyer, who deeply regrets he can't be here with us. The mayor is healthy, but he was near someone in the past few days that subsequently tested positive for COVID, and in abundance of caution, he is self-isolating this weekend. On his behalf, I want to offer an especially warm welcome to the 19th Most Worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Jerry G. Jones, and to Evangelist Janice E. Nelson, great-granddaughter of Mr. July Perry, and also to Pam Grady, Executive Director of the July Perry Foundation. I also want to recognize other city commissioners here today, Commissioner Robert Stewart. And let me also acknowledge, and please stand, because and, and there's too many of y'all for me to recognize, and that's a good thing, but acknowledge local, state, and federal elected officials that gather with us today for this important ceremony. Please stand up. Thank you for joining us here today. Some of some, some are just newly minted. <laughs> just got reelected. It is essential, a moral responsibility, that our community pause and think about the violence, hatred, and terror inflicted on black citizens in West Orange County and throughout this nation, but in West Orange County, 100 years ago this week. In remembering those dark times in Central Florida history, we are bringing light to the remarkable stories of July Perry and the black community of Okoe. A community, families, human beings who were murdered, maimed, scarred, terrorized, and forced to flee their homes and worldly possessions. Reflecting on these episodes and lives help energize our work in the ongoing struggle for justice and racial equality for healing and hopefulness between the diverse communities of Central Florida. Together, let us honor our heroes, heroes like July Perry and Mose Norman, leaders in our community, simply hoping to have their voices heard at the ballot box, simply exercising their constitutional right to vote, and they were killed for it. It is a priority for Mayor Dyer, for me, and for the city of Orlando that we redouble our efforts to secure the equal protection of our laws, something that Mr. July Perry and the black citizens of our community did not enjoy 100 years ago. Thank you for letting me give remarks today. Thank you so much, Commissioner Sheehan. At this time, we're pleased to welcome Mrs. Pam Brady, 
Executive Director of the July Perry Foundation, who will give remarks. Ms. Gray. Good morning, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming out. As you said, my name is Pamela Grady, and I am the Executive Director of the Julius July Perry Foundation. The July Perry Foundation was formed to preserve and honor the legacy of the hero of the Accord Massacre. The memory and the legacy of the man that we know as Julius July Perry rivals the memory of those leaders who came after him. Men like Martin Luther King Jr., Megger Evers, and our very own Harry and Harriet Moore, who took up the right to vote torch in Minnesota Florida after Brother Perry was killed. We cannot afford to forget our leaders and their sacrifice. Remember because remembering gives us hope, courage, and the motivation that we need to continue in our struggles today. While we may not be fighting the Jim Crow laws of the South anymore, we are dealing with systemic, systemic racism in our land. The right to vote was a rite of passage worth fighting for. It was worth dying for. In 1920, the issue was not the right of the African American man to vote. You see, passed by Congress February 26, 1869, and ratified February 3, 1870, the 15th Amendment gave the African American man the right to vote. The 1920 fight to vote was about the women. At that time, African-American women outnumbered registering to vote the white women four to one. This was largely due to the different dynamics in the household. You see, the Caucasian men wouldn't allow their women to vote, whereas in the African-American home, that was less likely to be the case. My brother, Julius July Perry, died fighting not only for his right to vote, but for the, white, the black woman's right to vote. And how ironic is it that on the very last day of his life, he stood fighting with them. His wife, Estella Perry, and his daughter, Carita, were by his side that fateful night, November 2nd, 1920, when the lynch mob showed up at his door. As brothers and sisters, regardless of the color of our skin, we must stand together in the quest for equity. My sister, Maya Angelou, said, Develop enough courage to stand up for yourself and then stand up for somebody else. My brother Julius Black Perry stood up for himself. He stood up for women. He stood up for his brother Moses Norman. And now his legacy stands up for us all. We will not forget. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Grady. At this time, I'm pleased to welcome to the stage Mrs. Lizzie Jenkins, director of the Real Rose Rosewood Foundation for Remarks. Right. Ms. Jenkins. Good morning. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the real Rosewood Foundation. We stand with you today to honor the histories of survivors and victims of the 1923 Rosewood Massacre and the Okoy Riots. I call the victims' names Lexi Gordon, Sarah Carrier, Samuel Carter, Mitzi Williams, and July Perry, and other countless members or people. Racism and hatred for black people lived in the hearts and minds of the perpetrators who raised Rosewood to the ground, terrorized July Perry to death, bombed Tulsa, Oklahoma, and stole innocent lives in acts of 
public execution. I will fast forward because I was asked to speak on Rosewood. I want to let you know that my aunt, my Harvard Gussie Brown Carrier, was the Rosewood school teacher and the historian. She shared her pain and humiliation with her sister, my mother. And I can say that the rest is history. My mother told me the story at age five. Marker. And I am being told that my time is up. 
and I appreciate that. But lastly, I must say this. started this, I must admit to you all that I did not know that there was a mayor of the city of Orlando and a mayor of Orange County. And I'm sure most of you didn't know that either. But I had the awesome opportunity today to meet the mayor of Orange County. So today we're going to have remarks from Mayor Jimmy Jerry Demings, mayor of Orange County for us. Worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Jeffrey D. Jones, to all members of the Freemasons of Florida, to our elected officials, to all of you here, to the Perry family. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to participate in this program today. I say that because of what it really represents. If you're like me, it strikes a certain emotion in us. It is an emotion that we share of both sadness and joy. I say sadness because as an African-American standing here in a cemetery where we are honoring the life and the legacy of July Perry and to understand what happened to him, that he was lynched trying to vote on November the 2nd, 1920. It should stir a certain emotion in me, one of sadness. But the fact that we're here today participating in this program with the Freemasons to honor him with his final rites should bring some joy to you as well. His marker is here. His headstone is here. Earlier this week, I had the privilege of presenting a resolution on behalf of the nearly 1.4 million people who call Orange County home to the descendants of the Okoye Massacre, resolving that November the 2nd, 2020, was Okoye Massacre Descendants Day in Orange County, Florida. Being the first elected African American Orange County Mayor, also having served as the first elected African American Orange County Sheriff, and also having served as the first appointed Orlando Chief of Police. Yes. I'm honored to stand oh, here because Glory. I couldn't do that Glory, unless some things in America, mm -hmm. unless some things in America had changed. Right. Here we are, we find ourselves this week, 100 years later, yeah. still struggling with a fair election process in America. Here we are. So I'm honored to be here today with my wife. You're going to hear from her. Um, Congresswoman Val Butler Demings. Yes! Florida's Congressional District 10. Yes! I want all members of the Freemasons and all of those gathered here today to honest, understand that we do honor the life and legacy of all those victims yeah. from the Okoye Massacre. And certainly, our brother and friend, July Perry. Thank you. 
God bless you all. May God bless these great United States of America. Thank you, Mayor Dennings. We are honored to also have commissioners from the city of Accord. First up is Commissioner George Oliver, City of McCoy, District 4, to bring remarks. Commissioner Oliver. Good morning. Good morning. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the everlasting words of the Lord. He hadn't failed us yet. Amen. To the Honorable Jerry G. Jones, ninth, ninth most worshipful Grandmaster, and the members of the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge, <laughs> to the elected officials, to all the visitors that are here, and most importantly to the family of the great, the Honorable Great Julius July Perry. I bring you greetings from the city of Ocoy, Florida. As Mr. Julius July Perry left Travelers Rest, South Carolina in the late 1800s with his two friends, Vincent Hightower and Bose Norman, they started a journey. They started a journey to blaze a trail. They found themselves in the city of Ocoy, Florida where they planted a seed and say, this ground is good. This is where we will rest our heads. We have reached our promised land. And they planted that seed and they commenced to blaze a trail, not only for the African-American community, but all that worked with him in the orange grove, for all that worked with him to, to get the labor unions together to cultivate the land. But little did he know that he would be laying that seed and it would be the last seed that he would sow in that city. For he had to pay the ultimate price for freedom. He paid the ultimate price for us to stand here today. He paid with his life. And we stand here today honoring him for the price that he paid. Not only that, but as the first African American commissioner in the city of Ocoin, mm. I owe a blood debt yeah. to Mr. Julius July Perry. Yeah. It is a debt that I cannot pay. Mm. I cannot, I can work all my life, but I don't think I can fully pay that debt because he paid for his life. Amen. But one thing I guarantee you that I can do, mm -hmm. I can work for the rest of my life to preserve the memory yeah and the legacy of the late Honorable Julius July Perry. Right. Because I'm standing on the shoulders of a giant, right. of a trail that he blazed for me to stand here before you as the first. Mm -hmm. 100 years have went by and we're still celebrating first. Mm -hmm. That should ring a lot in your ears. Amen. But it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. We still got a ways to go. Yeah. But we're all going to get there together. Yeah. And I say you stand before you today, <clears throat> your phones have probably been ringing, <laughs> dinging, and vibrating yeah. right now. Mr. July, Julius July Perry, you have weighed in. You have cast your vote. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Oliver. Next, we're going to have Commissioner Larry Brinson. 
Commission of City of Okoye, District 1. Commissioner Brent. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, to the Grand Worshipful Grand Master, uh, thank you for this event. Uh, as I look out on this august body, I, uh, I'm not lost on the significance of this event. Uh, to, to all the elected officials, I'd just like to say thank you for coming out. It is very important uh, that we're here. The bulk of African American history is not in the history books. And so for many generations, African Americans have shared their histories through storytelling. And if you allow me to tell you a story. If you heard it before, just bear with me and act like you have. <laughs> But the story begins like this. In 1619, slavery came to America. Well. In 1831, Nat Turner revolted. Mm -hmm. In 1831, the abolitionists and the Underground Railroad was established. 1857, Dred Scott. In 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. In 1865, the Civil War ended. Mm -hmm. But in 1896, it was separate but equal. Mm. In 1919, well, the Red Summer. Yes, In 1920, the Okoye Election Day Massacre. Mm. In 1921, the Tulsa Massacre, also known as Black Wall Street. 1923, Rosewood Massacre. 1941, African Americans fought in World War II. Yes. But yet in 1956, Brown versus the Board of Education. Yes, In 1955, Rosa Parks. 1963, I Have a Dream. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. 1965, Selma to Montgomery. In 1965, Malcolm X was assassinated. 1965, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. In 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. In 1968, also the Fair Housing Act. In 1972, Shirley Chisholm ran for president. 1995 was the Million Man March. 2008, we're going to skip to 2008, because in 2008, Barack Obama. In 2013, the Black Lives Movement. In 2016, the National Museum of African American History was opened in Washington, D.C. As you can see, the nation is progressive. Yes. The question is, is a Koi progressive? Well. And so when you ask a Koi if it was a person, do you believe that you are progressive? Mm. And I think a Koi would say without hesitation or reservation, absolutely yes. Mm. And the reason I say that, because in, in 2018, mm. the first African-American commissioner was elected to office in the city of a okay. Just one year later. The second African-American commissioner was elected in the city of Okoa. Okay. That was me. Okay. And here we are. I stand before you not only as an elected official in the city of Okoa, but also as the mayor pro tem. Mm. I'm going to say this. It is not the desire to rule that makes a man great. It is his desire to serve. Mm -hmm. I believe Julius July Perry embodied that sentiment in his daily walk. Yeah. His contributions to his family, his community, and his craft and exemplify the fundamental tenets of good citizenship. Brother Perry, at personal risk and without financial or just uh, motive, chose to and willingly chose to risk his life for his brother. When I served in another capacity, we had a full white mirror at the entrance and the exit of our building. And on that mirror, uh, mirror held a, a, a sign. And that sign read, if you were accused of being a professional, would you be found guilty? Now let's change that up a little bit. If you were accused of being a brother, would you be found guilty? Well, and I believe in his own, well, in, in their own way, those well, who, that took his life asked July Perry that very question. Subsequent to that, July Perry was found guilty. His sentence was death. Death for being a man. Death for being a leader. Death for being a brother. I say to him, and to all who hear my voice, July Perry is a man of great conviction. Without him, I may not be standing here today. Yeah, so I thank you 
all you brothers, you sisters, and all those within the sound of my voice, because July Perry is alive and well. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Commissioner Brinson. At this time, we're pleased to welcome Senator Randolph Bracey, Florida Senate District 11. Senator Bracey. To the most worshipful master, Jeffrey Jones, the members of the free and accepted Masons, elected officials, everyone here. I am honored to be here today. I'm honored, I am honored to have been the sponsor of the legislation that makes it a requirement that all public schools teach about the history of July Perry and the Okoe massacre that will start next year. I'm so humbled and honored to, to, to have been able to accomplish that, along with many other people that have helped along the way. As we perform the last rites of July Perry, let us remember the past, <clears throat> the past, and what July Perry's life stood for. July Perry paid the ultimate sacrifice, risking and ultimately losing his life for the betterment of his community yeah. so that black Okoians could vote and enjoy the prosperity of their land and their toil. A land that was stolen mm -hmm. and never to be returned or families compensated. Let us not forget that. Let July Perry remind us of our present. July Perry taught us that there will always be a right time and a now time to fight for justice. 100 years later today, we are still fighting the same things that he fought for. So let us lead with the same courage in 2020 and beyond as he did in 1920. And let July Perry's life be an example to us to fight for our future. 100 years later, we're still speaking the name July Perry and talking about the work that he did. That he made sacrifices so that we could live in a more fairer and just world. July Perry was a trailblazer. So let us adopt that same spirit that July embodied. And I'll just leave you with this. When things go wrong, and they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh, when care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is strange with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure comes about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up though, the pace seems slow. You may succeed with another blow. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you never can tell just how close you are. It may be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse that you must not quit. I just want to say thank you to July Perry for leaving, leaving such a rich legacy for us to follow. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bracey. At this time, we're pleased to welcome State Attorney Aramis Ayala, 9th Judicial District Court of Florida. Senator, I mean, I'm sorry, Attorney Ayala. Greetings to the Honorable Jeffrey Jones. Greetings to all the elected officials, the lodge, the foundations, and the family. Thank you for all the work that you have done. Thank you for your relentless spirit that refused to stop. 
until the light shine bright on the truth. I want to thank you for the invitation. I'm truly honored to be part of this moment. In 1920, a heinous murder, and let's call it what it was, a heinous murder occurred in this community, an atrocious, racially charged hate crime. And we gather here today to honor one of the victims, July Perry. Yet even a hundred years after his death, towards reconciliation and restoration. Through the years, the truth continued to speak, thank God. It was a whisper, I rise. A little louder, I rise. In 100 years today, I, the truth, have risen. See, what is mentioned and what is not mentioned in our history books is a product of an intentional and strategic act. Power inequities give powerful people the privilege to determine what will and what will not be recorded. Yet the spirit of truth lived beyond the death of a legend, July Perry. See, killing a man does not kill the truth in which he lived nor the truth in which he died. It does not kill the pursuit of justice, and it certainly does not kill the pursuit of peace. See, I believe in the word that says the truth shall set you free. But I also believe that truth is only a part of justice. It is my hope that the spirit sees what doors the truth can truly open. May they witness accountability and strides towards real reconciliation and tangible restoration. Then may the peace that covers this family be the same peace in which Ms. Juli Mr. Julius July Perry rest. May he rest in eternal peace. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, State Attorney Ayala. For final comments, we're pleased to welcome Representative Val Demings, United States House of Representatives, 10th District. Representative Let me say, although it may be afternoon, let me still say good morning, good morning to all of you. It is my honor to join the Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge for this very special and sacred ceremony. I, too, want to give honor to whom honor is due. I acknowledge the Most Worshipful, worshipful Grand Master, Jeffrey Jones. Also want to acknowledge the junior grand warden, Honeywell, as well as the senior grand warden, Kendall Moore. Because of Masons, like July Perry, who fought for free and fair elections. Because of Masons, like July Perry, who believed that every person should have the right and the privilege yeah. to vote. Yeah. I can stand before you this morning and say these words. President elect Mr. 
July Perry, who dared to believe 100 years ago. He dared to believe that black people too had the right and should have the right to vote. He had the audacity to believe. And many others with him believed too. July Perry believed in the American dream. July Perry believed in America. July Perry loved America even when America did not love him back. You see, he was rooted and grounded in these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Scriptures say that a man born of a woman is of a few days. And those few days are full of trouble. But the question is not so much about how the man was born or when and how he died. But the question is, what did he do between birth and death? And death? You see, what did he do with his time here on earth? Today we honor Mr. July Perry because he believed that his greatest contribution to future generations was to fight for and to protect the right to vote. And you know what? He was right. Congressman John Lewis, a Prince Hall Mason, and a member of the H.R. Butler Large 23 in Atlanta, Georgia, shed his blood. honors today as he rests from labor to reward. May his brothers and his descendants find comfort and peace during this time. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Representative Al Yes. I now have the honor of bringing up the uh, Grand Historian for the Most Merciful Union Grand Lodge in Florida. And for those of you who did not know, uh, Jerry Urso is a man who loves history. Yeah. If you've ever met somebody who loves history, you're about to hear from him now. The reason why the Most Merciful Union Grand Lodge in Florida is here today is because Jerry Urso did some research on July Perry and wrote an article in the Palaxis Society Journal. He then subsequently asked the most worshipful grandmaster if we could give last rights to July Perry, a man who deserved it, who never got it. And so we are honored today to have, to present the occasion, worshipful grand historian, past master Jerry Urso, the reason why we are here today. Thank you so much, past master Urso. We thank you for your research, and we're so happy to be here. Past master Urso. I say good morning. Before we start the Masonic program, um, I would like to bring J. Carr, Daryl Jackson, and Pam Brady forward. On behalf of the 19th Most Worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Jeffrey G. Jones, the appendant and concordant bodies that are present today, the brothers and sisters of the Most Worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida, we have two words for you. We voted.
as today I get ready to give this occasion, I just wanted to say, African American history in the state of Florida runs through the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge of Florida. Yeah, right. Today we stand on this sacred ground on the 100th anniversary of the lynching of George A. Perry. We are assembled to perform the last rite ceremony as a solemn duty of all Masons. Prince Hall Masons have been at the forefront of the civil rights and social justice since our inception. Our beloved founder, Prince Hall, Sambo Freeman, Tita Best, Primus Trask, were among the first petitioners to the colonial court to call for the abolition of slavery and the repeal of the fugitive slave laws. Many Prince Hall Masons have served in every war in this country's history, with the beginning with the Revolutionary War. Upon conclusion of the Civil War, Prince Hall Masons held many political seats in the state of Florida. From the onset of the Emancipation Proclamation, voter suppression became an obstacle that many African Americans had to overcome. For example, our brother, the Honorable Josiah T. Walls, first African American congressman from the state of Florida, faced voter suppression when they contested each and every of his three elections to the United States House. In 1872, our Grand Master, the Honorable John R. Scott, faced an assassination attempt while serving in the Florida Assembly. The Honorable Samuel Petty, who served from Nassau County, had to defend himself against ruthless accusations in order to continue to be a member of the House of Representatives. Wow. At the Florida Constitutional Convention in 1868, it was our brother, Robert Meacham, who co-authored the Florida Constitution, where he wrote, we the people, of the state of Florida, being grateful to Almighty God for our constitutional liberty in order to secure its benefits, perfect our government, ensure domestic tranquility, and maintain public order, and guarantee equal civil and political rights to all, do we ordain and establish this constitution. But during the Black Codes and the Jim Crow laws, these truths would ring hollow to the faithful constituents of the state of Florida. After the Great Compromise of 1877, past Grand Master Tillman Valentine, a veteran of the Civil War and post commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, was summoned to be a poll watcher at Appalachicola. To counteract voter suppression, many African Americans were deputized as United States Deputy Marshals to send to the polls to protect the rights of those to vote. American voters also faced illegal poll taxes, literacy tests, and voter intimidation. On August 19, 1920, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution was ratified, giving women the right to vote. It was the belief that supporting voter education and voter registration would be the change that needed to come. The Honorable David Daniel Powell, our Grand Master, set forth the initiative um, and those in, um, here in Kobe worked tirelessly and throughout the state of Florida registering people to vote and how to vote. In the president election of 1920, um, African-American women outnumbered their white counterparts four to one. This new electorate was the main cause to put fear in those that supported the status quo. It is here in Central Florida that Julius P. Perry, Mose Norman, worked tirelessly to not only register people to vote, but to assist them in paying their poll taxes. There are many phrases we attribute to Prince Hall Masons, such as faith, hope, and charity, brotherly love, relief, and truth. As brothers, we refer to ourselves as our brother's keeper. The book of John 15, 13 states, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for his freedom. Right. On the day of November 2nd, 1920, Mose Norman knew that he would be able to take and find refuge at the home of Julius P. Perry. He gave his life defending his friend. Brother Perry stands as a model for those who sacrifice all for our rights of vote. The lynching of July Perry and the murder of his Masonic brother Martin Blackshear 
and countless others who were unaccounted for only emboldens the right for social justice. Although the edifice of Ocoee Lodge was burnt to the ground, its spirit lives on to this day. It is our brothers of this Grand Lodge, James Weldon Johnson, Brother Captain James W. Floyd, descended on St. Augustine, Florida, and met with the President-elect Warren G. Harding, which ultimately led to the Dwyer Act, which was anti-lynching legislation. July Perry should be forever remembered in the pantheon of great Prince Hall Masons, such as Charles Wesley Dobbs, W.E.B. Du Bois, Booker T. Washington, and Thurgood Marshall. 100 years ago, July Perry was not afforded a proper burial or his last Masonic rites. Today, under an edict of the 19th most worshipful Grand Master, the Honorable Jeffrey G. Jones, of the most worshipful Union Grand Lodge, most ancient and honorable fraternity, free and accepted Masons, state of Florida, Belize, Central America, jurisdictions incorporated, Prince Hall affiliated, we are here now to properly lay our brother to rest, brother Julius P. Perry, with full Masonic honors he so richly deserves.